guys, there's something I want to talk about, and that's basically why did I withdraw my application to join the British Army? Now, if you've seen all my videos about the British Army the Army Reserves, then you know that I was very passionate about it. So, why did I all of a sudden withdraw my application to join the British Army Reserves as an infantryman? To be honest with you guys, there's a number of reasons. Now, you've heard me bang on about this before. I'm from Northern Ireland. I grew up with the British soldiers on the streets. And I always told you that the British Army were my heroes. That's still true. But to be honest with you guys, I actually think that it was the Ulster Defence Regiment that were my true heroes. Now, we'll talk about the Ulster Defence Regiment in another Fox Recon video at a later date. But let's get back on track with regards to the British Army, my application to join them. So when I submitted my application to join the British Army, it was because of a number of reasons, such as one, I wanted to get physically fitter. Two, I wanted to meet new people. Three, I wanted to serve my country. And four, you know, I needed something to make a commitment to. So there's four reasons just offhand why I wanted to join the British Army with regards to being an infantryman in the Army Reserves. Now, if you Google British Army Recruitment Capita, you will see that there's loads and loads of complaints with regards to how Capita is recruiting for the British Army. For example, Capita is using stuff such like Can I Cry in the British Army? Or Can I Be a Homosexual in the British Army? You know, all these things Capita is playing on. You know, Can I Pray as a Muslim within the British Army? This is all the kind of stuff that Capita is doing with regards to the recruitment for the British Army. Now, the problem is with the recruitment process with Capita is that it is so darn slow. Now, I can tell you, I was actually fast-tracked. From the moment I applied to the British Army, I kept on hammering and hammering the people at Capita saying, you know, can we speed this up? And then they eventually fast-tracked me and that seen me ending up going down to Litchfield to selection and stuff like that. So as I got to selection, at Litchfield, you know, I met great people and stuff like that. Everything was superb until I actually seen the doctor. Now, the doctor in question just happens to be a capita doctor. Now, without going too much into personal details, there was something there in my medical history that came up from when I was a teenager. Now, anybody in there adolescent you know being an adult anybody who's adult enough would realize that that period when i was a 13 year old child you know should not really be affecting me with regards to joining the british army but again we're talking about capita capita doctors here so basically in a nutshell what was happening was you'll remember you'll remember in September 2017 September 2017 I broke my leg we all remember that you remember that and previously before that you remember I dislocated my shoulder and before that you know I had uh, cracked my arm and stuff like that so all these broken bones were appearing in my medical but again going back to something that happened when I was 13 it wasn't, you know, physically related, it was more mentally related. So, that capital doctor, he kept on, you know, like, uh, hanging on to this mentally stuff I had going on when I was 13 years old, instead of the here and now, of the here and now broken bones. But that's where the problem happened. The problem happened was because, as he was talking about you know, this uh, mental issue I had when I was 13, then he kept on like 
the sky is not issue with regards to the broken bones. So let me put that another way. So what this capital doctor was doing was he was telling, you know, the British army that the reason why I couldn't go forward or the reason why I was being deferred was because of all these broken bones and not because of this uh, issue I had when I was a 13 year old child. Now, but the thing was, on paper, to me, he was saying basically that it was because of this issue when I was 13 years old. So again, you know, I thought nothing of it, but the way it all ended was the British Army, or sorry, Capity's Cap medical team at Litchfield, they were saying to me, here's a personal diary, go away, do all this and do all that, and then come back and we'll basically say yes or no. So as you all know, I went away and I started working on my personal diary. You would see me doing running, cycling, hiking, stuff like that. And, you know, I was doing that basically every day. And then one day I got a letter in the post. And this letter in the post had basically went back to something. Again, you know, when I was 13. And I'm like thinking, for Christ's sake, give it a rest. Anybody, anybody in the right mind could see that would not affect me. But again, Capita was making a big deal about it. Now, another thing what the Capita doctors were making a big fuss about at the medical selection was basically blood pressure. Now, I don't know if you guys know, but basically you have uh, different stages of blood pressure. If you have under 120, I think it's cis, under 120 cis blood pressure, then you're normal. If you have 120 and above, then you have got a thing called elevated blood pressure. And then above that, you will have hypertension stage 1, then above that, hypertension stage 2, and then above that, you would have hypertension stage 3. Now, this capital doctor who I had, he was basically saying that I had, double quote, high blood pressure. Now, the reality, guys, is I did not have high blood pressure at all. Instead, I had something what was known as high normal blood pressure, okay? High normal blood pressure is basically just from, you've got a high, sorry, you've got normal, and then above normal, you have high normal, which I believe the medical industry has now rebranded it as pre-hypertension. So, you get that? It's called pre-hypertension blood pressure. Jesus so, are we going to call teenagers pre-adults? No, we don't call teenagers pre-adults. Instead, we call them teenagers. And then when they hit 18, then we call them adults. So, you see where I'm getting at, guys? So, basically, the whole medical, select, medical selection with regards to the medical team at Litchfield, i.e. the capital doctors, I find them to be very dishonest, very untrustworthy, and basically you just can't trust them. So that was one of the reasons why I wanted to withdraw my application to join the British Army. Also, I need to point out the doctor, I won't say his name for legal reasons, but this certain doctor carried out a testicular cancer examination on me, which Nobody else had that done to them. And I'm asking the question, why? Why did this doctor carry out a testicle cancer examination on me when nobody else had it? You ask me, it's something very dodgy. And that was another reason why I withdrew my application to join the British Army. Because I wanted to put in a formal complaint against that doctor. If I would have proceeded with my application and put a complaint in against that doctor, it would not look good. But again, if I withdrew my application, put the complaint in, then it would be better. Not only that, that wasn't the only reason. But the second reason was because I've, I developed a condition called seborrheitis. Now, if you don't know what seborrheitis is, 
Zebra multiitis is basically a condition on your foot that you get when you do too much exercise. It's basically an overuse injury. Now, because I was uh, really hammering my personal training diary for the British Army, I wasn't paying any attention to the fact that I had only came out of crutches, out of plaster and off crutches a few months before it. And ignoring all that, I ended up getting a sesamultiitis, which is a foot injury. And basically it's sore. So I thought to myself, you know, I'm not going to break my leg. I'm not going to permanently damage myself for the sake of joining the British Army. So again, that was another reason why I withdrew my application. Basically, I felt that the capital was wasting far too much of my time, was wasting far too much time of the British Army, and that the best thing to do would be waste nobody else's time and withdraw my application. So there you go guys, now you know why I withdrew my application from the British Army. The simple fact is, I feel I don't need the British Army. For example, if I want to get fitness, get fitter, all I have to do is go out running myself. I, all I have to do is go hiking myself. I will gladly bring you guys with me on my hikes. You're watching me now. In a few months time, once my... Uh, says a multi-itis injury heals hopefully heals touch wood then i will bring you guys on more fox recon adventures so as you can see there was really no benefit for me joining the british army reserves because as a british army reserve infantry man you're lucky if you do shooting about two times a year you know what i mean because the way the British Army is, is that you've got to go through this process, go through the insurance process, go through this, go through... I might as well just buy my own air pistol and go shooting. You get me, guys? Now, I do have a lot of love and respect for the British Army. I always will. But again, there's alternatives to having a military career. For example, you can join the French Foreign Legion. Just turn up in France, do four pull-ups, show them your passport and if they're happy they will take you and go and see if you can become a legionnaire in the French Foreign Legion. So again guys you know there we go. The best thing I've done and the correct thing I've done was withdrawing my application from the British Army. So now you all know I've done it because one I don't need them to get healthy, two the Terry Terry Army or the Army Reserves it's a minimum commitment of 27 days a year or something. Basically, I just felt it was a time waste, guys, okay? And there's basically other people better suited to military life than what I am. Okay, guys, now you all know. See you later.